Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. Robots are pretty cool, but most robots have only three or four wheels. Almost no robots have two wheels because that's too hard to make. Well, in this video, we're going to be building a robot kit that has only two wheels, and it's going to be pretty cool. So, uh, the company sent me this kit. Uh, Saint Smart, they sent me this Instabot Upright Rover Kit, and so we're going to build this kit today, and it's going to be awesome. Let's get started. So, what we're going to do first is open up this kit and build the robot, and then after we're done with that, I'll explain the physics on how this works, because the physics is actually pretty cool, and the most important part about building something isn't just building it, it's actually learning how it's built. So, let's take a look at what we get in this package. So here's the Bluetooth module. Here is uh, the shield with the uh, stepper motor drivers on it and some voltage regulators. We also have a USB cord. We have some screws, uh, nuts. I think this is the accelerometer. We have a battery connector, standoffs, and we have our Arduino uh, mega board. This is what's gonna be controlling everything. Here we have uh, the accelerometer. Actually, I think one of the things that I just showed was actually not an accelerometer and a uh, stepper motor driver. Anyway, here are the, some of the wheels. These are pretty good wheels. This is the frame that's used to build the body of this thing. Now, these motors aren't actually stepper motors like you would expect, but they're actually encoder motors. That's what this thing on the back is. What it does is it uses um, a magnet and a Hall effect sensor to tell exactly what rotation this motor is in at any given point. And this makes it pretty useful because you can uh, use it for precise motor thing, even without a stepper motor. Okay, so the first step is going to be to peel off some of this uh, stuff from the polycarbonate. You're then going to want to mount the motors onto these mounts. Now you want to use this mount that has the two holes on it. So you merely slide the motor in until the two holes line up. And you're going to want to take a screw out of this little screw hole. And you're going to want to screw it into both sides of the motor mount. You then want to take a bolt and some nuts. You want to use those to mount your motor right underneath the chassis. Now, it may be useful to do this before you actually mount the motor, but it still can be done. So you just want to stick the nut under there and screw it down. Okay, so now after both of the motors are successfully mounted to the bottom of the piece of uh, plexiglass, we can start to attach the wheels. And to attach the wheels, we're going to need these special pieces. These are what hook into the little hex nut thing on the back of the wheel and what allow it to mount to the motor shaft. So we're going to take a few of those out, and we're going to stick one in the motor, I mean in the wheel, like this. And then stick a screw right here, and tighten it down. You can then use the screws that came with the device to put into these little screw holes on the sides of the little brass things. Okay, so now after the base is done, you should have your two wheels and your two motors, and they should both spin freely. So now what is time to do is to mount the Arduino. Now what you're going to need to do first is you're going to need to round up some of these standoffs. These are what's going to keep your Arduino above the plastic. So you're going to dump out a few of them, and you're going to need about three standoffs in a line. So connect three standoffs together like this. And you need to make four of these pairs of three standoffs. You can then take each uh, triple of three standoffs and with a nut attach them into the holes where the Arduino will go. With all the standoffs set in place, you can take the Arduino and set it in the right position on top of the standoffs, like this. You will then take a screw and insert a screw into the Arduino, like this and tighten it down so that way it can be secured to the standoffs. After the Arduino is attached, this whole thing should be structurally sound, the Arduino shouldn't move, and you should be able to easily slide a battery underneath. This battery is going to be powering the robot. So, 
with this being done, it's time to start soldering all the components that will go on the shield. These components are what make the shield work. If you're going to start with the Bluetooth module, and that is inserted right into these pins right here. It's able to just slide in. There we go. Now it's time to insert the accelerometer. Now to do this, you're going to need to solder these pin headers into place right here. And then you're going to want to stick it inside here like that. You then need to find this piece, which is the motor driver. And you want to insert the header pins in again, like so. And you want to put solder on these pads, just like we did on the other device. Okay, so now after all the components are all inside the shield, it's time to solder these wires that will be going into the battery clip. So you want to use a soldering iron and tin those wires. Now, solder and heat shrink the battery wires into place on the battery clip. With that, you can take the wires and connect them into the proto shield and attach the proto shield to the Arduino. The red wire will go down here where the positive is, and you can tighten that down. Attaching the shield is a little bit tricky, but it can be done. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into the Sane Smart website. And the Sane Smart website has all the stuff you need for this thing. So right here we have the APK file for Android, and you just need to download that from your phone to get the app. But here is this code for the Instabots. Now this code has all of the things you need to make your car work. Now inside this code folder, which is zipped, you'll find a libraries folder called lib. Now if you go into the libraries folder, you'll see all these libraries. And what you're going to need to do is import all these libraries into your Arduino. So you click on your Arduino thing, and then you're going to want to click sketch and include library. You're going to want to scroll up to add zip library. Then you're going to go to wherever your library is stored. In my case, it's going to be code for Instabots v4. You're going to want to find your libraries. You're going to want to import all of them. These ones are going to make your thing work. So I'll just start importing those. And as you can see, if I look in my library, see, FlexiTime, FlexiTimer 2 is right there, along with all the other crystals or libraries that I've added. So now it's time to look at all these other libraries and add more. Okay, so now if you look inside your include libraries folder, you can see that all five of the libraries for the car are inside there. So now it's time to open up the files because inside here we have the files for the Arduino for the car. So we're going to go into main, and we're going to see upright rover and upright rover v4 no words. Now, I'm not quite sure what no words means, but I'm just going to do this first one. So I'm going to open up this Arduino program, and it's going to open in a separate tab. Okay, so I've successfully opened up the file that has all of the stuff in it to run the car. It's called Upright Rover V4. Now, if you notice, this is a quite a long program. So I'm not really going to explain what all this means. Uh, also, I'm not really sure because a lot of it is written in Chinese or something. But anyway, so you're going to take this file and you're going to want to download it to the Arduino Mega. So you go to Tools and you set the board to Arduino Mega. And I'm pretty sure it's this one. And then you're going to upload the code to your Arduino. So after you get the shield all installed and you get the program installed on it, then you can plug in these two motor cables. These go to the motors and magnetic encoders. You want to plug it in so the white wire is facing the inside on both motors. Now this shield should be all done. Your robot should be just about ready to go. Now one more thing I need to mention is these jumper cables right here. So this robot will not work without these jumper cables. Now when I actually got this, it didn't come with that. Uh, that's one minor issue. But the customer support at Saint Smart was extremely helpful in helping me figure out this issue. And I was able to learn that you need these two jumpers in order for the robot to actually connect with the Bluetooth. So what you need to do is just jump these two wires. If they're not already jumped, jump them. If they're already jumped, then you're fine. 
Then you can plug in your robot to a battery. In my case, I'm using uh, drone racing LiPo. Uh, that one works, but you can use almost any battery. You can set it up, turn it on, and see what happens. As you can see, it starts self-balancing. You will then want to go on an Android device. Now, the issue with this um, robot is that you need to have an Android device running anything below Oreo. For some reason, Oreo doesn't work yet, but I think the app developer is making an update to their app. So you want to go on your uh, application, and you want to click the same smart Bluetooth. Now, you don't actually need to click this yet because it won't actually connect with your device. You'll need to get the app. Okay, you will then need to get this Sane Smarts Instabot app. Now, this app isn't actually on the Google Play Store, so you'll need to go online and you'll need to download the APK file. Now, after you download the APK file, then you can go into Settings and you want to go into Security. You then want to come down here where it says Unknown Sources and click the checkbox. This will allow you to install APK files downloaded off the web. This should let this app run fine on your Android device. Now after you install this app, you can click on it, and it will come up with a screen. This is select your device. You can then select the device, it will connect to your car, and there you go, ready to control. This robot is really fun to drive around. So you can drive forward, you can put it into reverse, you can turn around and do all kinds of cool stuff. Now I find that it best works on carpet like this. Because on the wood floors, the wheels don't actually have enough traction to uh, drive. So when you do it on this thin carpet, it gives the wheels traction. It also makes it so it can still move pretty fast. You can also do some pretty good donuts. So this robot works using this accelerometer sensor, which means that when it's straight up, it'll be sending it a value that means it's straight up. Now when it tilts this way, it sends that value that it's about to tip over, and so it makes the wheel power change so that way it rights itself. And so it can drive around like this, and whenever it feels like it's tilting forward, it's going to give the power to the wheels in the opposite direction so it will right itself. Now how this thing drives forward and turns is that it makes the sensor so that way it thinks that this is straight so that way it'll constantly be giving the wheels power to keep it at this exact position which will make it drive forward and depending on what tilt you're giving it it'll drive forward faster or slower so overall I think that this little self-driving car is a really cool product now one of the cool things that I've noticed about this is that all the Arduino code is given to you to upload so by giving this, the company allows the buyer or consumer to be able to modify this in whatever way they want. So I can go into the code right now and change tons of different values to make this drive completely differently. I can also add various different sensors and other things so I can make this robot to, into something that can do various other tasks. If I put some ultrasonic sensors on it, I could have this robot be able to drive by itself and avoid different obstacles. I could also adjust the settings inside it so that way it wouldn't wobble so much while it drives and maybe drive faster. I'd like to thank Sane Smart for sending me this cool product. In one of my later videos, I may show you how to make this robot so it has sensors and can do different tasks. This robot has a lot of cool possibilities. If you want to buy this, you can check uh, below and I'll have an Amazon link down there so you can buy it. As always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next time.